give the universe that clear sign of what you want. And it's really that co-creation of your next personal year. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen, and welcome back after our summer break. So I like to take a little summer break on the podcast so that I can enjoy my summer, we can get a little breather, and we have more time to prepare for the next season. So I quite like having seasons where sometimes you're on and sometimes you take a little break because I don't really believe in like go, 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 never ending, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed your summer. I hope it brought you a lot of good memories. Memories, and I'm excited for today because we are going to learn about how to use October to prepare for our 2024. So it'll make more sense when you listen to the episode, but essentially, October is an amazing opportunity to set yourself up for success and to manifest everything that you want to bring into your life for the next year. So we'll explain why in this episode. So before we get into it, though, I want to let you know that we are planning to launch our 2024 Artist of Life workbook on October 18th. So save the date and make sure you follow us on Instagram at Shop Lavendaire so that you stay tuned for the updates that will be coming very, very soon. Super excited for this new version. So our guest today is Joy Woodward. Joy Woodward is an internationally acclaimed Pythagorean numerologist and best-selling author of A Beginner's Guide to Numerology, revolutionizing our understanding of the mystical language of numbers. With her expertise, she has empowered thousands, including celebrities and influencers, to optimize personal performance, ignite soul-aligned connections, and overcome barriers to success. Featured in Women's Health and Well and Good, Joy brings a fresh and modern perspective to numerology. Her dynamic personality and intuitive insights have made her a sought-after expert in the field. Joy lives in Edmonton, Alberta with her husband and dog Wolfgang, where her intuitive readings continue to transform lives. Hello, Joy. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today. How are you feeling? I'm doing fabulously. Thank you so much for having me back. You have the most beautiful audience. I met so many beautiful souls from the last podcast. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I brought you on to talk about the numerology of October and why it's so special. So let's start with why is October so special? Why do we have to know about this in numerology? This is the predictive fortune-telling tool that numerology offers. And when you can tune into this, it makes it so much easier to step into the flow, to know what the energy is supporting you working on. It can save you from making some really not awesome moves and just give you general direction. But you can actually influence the energy of your next year you're going into. So you're saying October is a month where we can influence the year of the energy of next year. So 2024, can you explain like in in terms of numbers, how that works and why it does that? Yeah. So if you know your attitude number, this is how we find your personal sort of drumbeat or rhythm. And that attitude number is simply from the day plus month you were born. So this is one of the absolute easiest calculations in numerology. So you take the day and month you're born and you add it to the calendar year. So I'll use you as an example. Mm -hmm. I think it's October 21st. So in numerology, we always like to reduce everything to a single digit. So October is the 10th month, becomes a one. The 21st becomes a three, two plus one equals three. And then we add October to the three. So that's a four. And for 2023, that adds up to a seven. So we've been in a seven universal year. So for you, you've been in an 11-2 personal year, which is a master number. So every once in a while, there's a master number and we don't reduce those. Uh, But I know you and I um, did a reading earlier this year. And that 11-2, I said, was a destined event. And I know you've had some major stuff going on this yeah. year with like <laughs> purchasing your home and doing some other stuff. So um, that's just sort of a theme that you can become aware of. And then you move through the months numerically. 
And that is where you get that real flow and magic that you can invite in. Yeah. So let's talk about 2024. Give us an example of how the numbers, how October, the number of October adds up to the year of 2024. Okay. So for you right now, like we just determined you're in an 11 2 year. Yeah. Right. 2023. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add the calendar month and that, you know, for October, that will be a one. And so you also happen to have a birthday in that month. So hopefully that's not confusing people. But when you add the one to the two, now you get a three. So October will be a three personal month for you. And 2024 is going to be a a three personal year. So October 21st, your birthday, plus 2024, which is an eight. Eight plus the four, three. Or first it's 12, then it's three. Okay. (laughs) I just want to make it clear for people who is like their first time hearing about numerology. Hopefully you've listened to our other podcast before guys, but basically like every month has like a personal, like a theme and it's calculated from that attitude number that comes from your birthday. And every year has a theme uh, on its own. Like basically if you add your attitude number plus the year, that's the theme of your year is what you were saying. Right. So I don't want to use 2023 because it's confusing for people. It came, it was a master number. So yeah. like my theme for my year in 2024 is three because she just added my birthday, October 21st. Those digits add up to four. And then the digits of 2024 add up to eight. So four plus eight equals 12. One plus two equals three. That's why my year is a theme three of next year. Yes, so 2024. What Will yeah, be a three year for you. And then what happens with October is because of the way October is a one, it's that theme of that month is the same number as the theme of your next year. Yes. Which is why it's kind of like like you said, it's a fortune teller for what will happen next year for you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you can influence it. So there's a formulas page on my website. If people go there and just look for the attitude number, how to find your attitude number, super simple. It's all laid out. They'll be able to find it really easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about how to use October. Like, what does it really mean that it's a fortune teller? Like, everything we do is going to happen in the next year, or like, give us the details. Okay, so I'll give you some personal examples and some client stories of things that I have seen people manifest and bring into their next year based on how the actions they've taken under that influence of October has been able to impact uh, their the year they're going into. So because it holds the same numerical vibration, you're setting it up and then you're going to invite that into your next personal year. So one year, I decided that I wanted fresh flowers in my house all the time. That was, I I kind of got a little, a little cocky about how I was going to use October. It was sort of when I had first started trying these things, I was going into a six personal year, which rules beauty and it rules your home. So I invited the energy of fresh flowers in my house by always making sure that in the month of October, whether it was $5 Gerber's from the grocery store or something a little more, you know, substantial, I made sure that I always had fresh flowers in my house. That following year, I received flowers from so many unexpected sources. <laughs> it was absolutely wild. So um, I had a neighbor, it was her birthday, and she was leaving for the airport. And she dropped off these flowers and said, please enjoy, I want someone to enjoy these were just delivered. Thank you. Um, you know, my husband was at one of those charity luncheons or business luncheons, he won the centerpiece. Later on in the year, I won one of those centerpieces. <laughs> I helped a friend with her mom's memorial. Um, she was leaving town the next day. She said, can you just deal with these flowers? I was like, yes, I'll deal with the flowers. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, you know, just really unexpected sources that these flowers streamed in. And then my husband decided he liked how fresh how flowers looked in the house. And 
you know, he stepped it up and started bringing me, (laughs) you know, the grocery store and things. It was fabulous. So that's just a real little kind of example, but something where you can just set that intention and sort of influence. So you can use this for your relationships. You can use this for your finances. You can use it for your career. It is, you know, you just have to get really intentional set some clear goals, and then take action steps in the month of October that give the universe that clear sign of what you want. And it's really that co-creation of your next personal year. It's almost like that whole month is like a new moon for the next year, (laughs) right? (laughs) It is. Well, and so you want to pay attention to the new moon in that month and the full moon in that month. And just make sure that you've created space. That's one of the biggest um, sort of blocks I see with people is when they're trying to manifest things, they haven't let go of anything. So they haven't created space. And the universe is a vacuum. So everything will fill in um, if you can let go. So there's, I always say there's three kinds of major clutter. There's emotional clutter. That's all the unforgiveness and resentments you're holding against people and, and, you know, experiences, things you want to let go of those. Then there's physical clutter, which, you know, can be as simple as going through your closet, going, you know, looking in the basement, what's all this stuff, Um, you know, releasing a lot of that physical clutter. And then the third one is digital clutter. And this is becoming just massively huge and people are not even aware of it. Like, do you need that email from 2011? Do you, (laughs) do you know, do you really need 4,000 screenshots. Um, So when you can clean up your digital clutter, it really, everyone has a digital aura, which is sort of their persona, their social media, all the things. And that clutter is a part of it. So if you want new experiences to come in, it's really important to make space. Mm. So you're saying we should declutter in October or before October? (laughs) I like to declutter every full moon. Oh, and wow. okay. there's, there's different energies that numerically can support decluttering. So nine energy is the natural place to let things go and to release. So nine energy is always a good time, whether it's your nine day, your nine month or your nine year. And then, um, four energy rules organization. So sometimes that can help you and six energy rules, your home, it rules beauty, your fashion statements. So that also can be a place where it where it helps. It's really about setting the intention and finding the energy of that number to support your actions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So going back to October, is it do you suggest that people focus on, let's say, a small number of things that they want to invite? Or can they just, you know, everybody wants all good things in all areas of life, right? So (laughs) well absolutely are there limits to this? What I like to do is I say, don't set yourself up for failure, right? So you want to set some manageable goals. And this year we have that, you know, we have a full moon right at the end of September. I think it's on the 29th. And so that's a great time to, you know, really do some release work, create space. But the super moon at the end of August, that also is giving us great energy. So any full moon will help you release. And if you get down to really knowing your days, um, your numerical days, like I said, that nine energy, all of that, um, make it manageable, though. Don't set yourself up for failure. I had one client um, who wanted to quit smoking. And I said, okay, um, beware, like, be successful in October and you will have kicked it for good. He had a few too many cocktails at a Halloween party. He made it the whole month at this Halloween party. He had more than, more than a couple cigarettes and he spent a good portion of his next year trying to quit smoking because that's Mm -hmm. what he was trying to do in October. So, you know, eventually he was successful, but it took him a little longer because of that October energy step back. So you're saying it's the energy that we bring in October. You can't be trying to like, it's kind of like manifesting where you have to like, just bring that energy as if you're living it. And then that's what, Okay. Yeah, you put it out there. So, in terms of improving finances, 
um, you know, set some goals. If your goal is to eliminate a responsibility, I don't like using words like debt or credit cards and things like that. But if you're trying to eliminate a financial responsibility that you have, make sure in October you're paying a little more than you maybe had to. If you can pay a little bit every single day and then you can affirm, I'm eliminating this responsibility, I'm eliminating this responsibility, and when you actually are transferring money onto it, you're making it true. If one of your goals is to um, you know, pay off your mortgage, if you can swing it in October, make an extra mortgage payment if your you know, financial agreement allows. If not, put some extra money away for your you know, extra mortgage payment that you want to make. And then you have that energy that you're putting out. If you want to travel, you can, you know, if you can take a trip, great. But research, plan, put a little money aside for that. Um, you know, if you want to release some weight, um, you want to make sure that in October you're not gaining weight, <laughs> right? And so I don't like using the word lose, Um when we lose something like our keys or, you know, we lose money, it's, it's negative. And so if we can reframe that into releasing, then it comes, you know, it's a little bit more positive and it, it flows. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, it never fails every year. I get texts and emails from clients, um, you know, having, having small meltdowns because negative things have happened and they're like, oh, no, October is sucking. I can't, you know, I'm going to need to buy a new car. I'm going to, you know, those are clues as to things that are coming into your next year. So the unexpected mm-hmm. stuff is really where that that fortune teller insight can come from. So you can influence your year, but the unexpected stuff that comes in, that's really where you can pick up clues as to things you might be experiencing. Do you have more examples of that from like you or your clients? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a personal example. So one October, um, my dad had to have surgery and my parents live about 2000 miles away from me. And so I, I have siblings, but I was the one who flew home and we're scattered across the country. Um, so, do you know, it was, it was interesting that I was the one who went home from where I live and, um, you know, stayed with them, everything. And I was on that plane and I was thinking, this is the absolute worst thing. I would never put this in October. And um, fast forward, my dad ended up getting accepted into a clinical trial in the city that I live in. And they flew here every six months and stayed with me. So where in October, I was thinking, I'm going to be here all the time, doctors, hospitals, this is gross. It actually turned out to be the exact opposite. And he came to get treatment. And Mm -hmm. that was over 10 years ago. And he's still fine. And that's far beyond what his prognosis was. So it ended up being a huge blessing. But I just thought it was so, um, you know, the universe is so much more magical than we give it credit for. You know, it could have been my sister that went home, but it wasn't. It was me. And I'm the one Mm -hmm. who, you know, is foreshadowing that you were going to be the one dealing with this. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, do you know, but it, like I said, it worked out to be so positive. But at the time, you really could not have told me that. But I almost feel like the universe gives me these experiences so I can relate them back to clients and give, give good examples. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. So if something happens to your car, just go, okay, maybe the universe wants to give me a new car. Right? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what's in my future. Um, right. You know, one year I had a delayed flight in October and I was traveling quite a bit then and every month I was going, you know, somewhere. I was on a delayed flight every month, every month. There was a delayed <laughs> oh flight. But what it did was gave me time to prepare. I always made sure I had my cell phone charger. I always made sure I had a book and some work that I could be doing. So that was a, you know, foreshadowing that allowed me to be prepared for this experience. (laughs) Right. So be really conscious of the things that happen in October, intentional or unintentional, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then I also, um, 
you know, I don't, I don't necessarily watch a lot of news, but in October, I pay attention to some of the big themes that are coming out. If you think back to 2020, that those first COVID cases um, in China happened under that, you know, that end of October, October. energy, oh. right? And um, even last year, we had a lot of natural um, mother nature type events, right? Mm. And this year, that was one of my predictions was that we're going to we're going to really hear from mother nature in ways that we have not even imagined. And that's where we've had, you know, I mean, the fires, the earthquakes, the, you know, boats sinking, like it's been pretty crazy. So that is all held in that vibration of the energy. So if you pay attention, you can prepare. Uh, so you're saying it's not just for our own lives. It's just the, the world, the collective as a whole. Like everything is foreshadowed in October for the next year. Yeah, it really is. So even if you look at, you know, politics and who's having trouble and, you know, who's in the news, that tends to show up again. So that's mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah. Are there any things that we should not do in October? Like we should be really conscious, like don't do this or, or any don'ts for how to prepare? Yeah, absolutely. I am, I am uber careful about what I don't do. So <laughs> I don't go to the doctor. I don't go to the dentist. If I can act like if there was an emergency, obviously. Yeah. But I don't take my dog to the vet. I don't take my car for so much as an oil change because I feel like that's the message of my car being in the right, shop. So right. I am I'm very careful about anything I don't want more of. I don't uh-huh. do. You uh-huh. can use this in your relationships. So um, if there's, you know, everyone everyone's experienced that friend who's a little bit of an energy vampire or sucks up a lot of their time. <laughs> if in October you make sure you limit their access to you, you can actually, you know, that that relationship can sort of take care of itself and fade away. A lot of times I get asked about love and relationships. If your relationship is toxic in October, if you're fighting all the time, that's probably a pretty good sign that it's not going to get better. Mm. Okay. So take those clues, figure out what you need to do, make a plan, right? But if it's, you know, sort of a newer relationship, maybe that's the little nudge you need to, you know, move on. So it really, really can predict things um, of that nature. Wow. So interesting. Okay. So if anyone needs to do these admin things, like go to the doctor, try to do it before October. <laughs> yeah, or, before or November. November. Put it or or November. wait until November. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's, um, but it's really quite fascinating. And I've been doing this now for almost 15 years. And so the collection of stories I have from clients, is absolutely amazing. (laughs) Wow. I I can't believe you've been doing it for so long. Can you walk us through kind of your preparation routine? Like what do you, like, how do you prepare? Do you have things written out? I don't know. Do you write things on your calendar? Yeah. So every year there are a few things that I I do every October. Um, One of them is read because I love having time to read. And one year, my husband and I actually instituted reading hour where we just Mm. turned off the TV and we both just sat there and read our books or, you know, whatever we were doing. And that was, that was just really beautiful. We both had time to, you know, go through lots and lots of books that year. Um, one year I actually reread my old numerology books and I didn't, that wasn't something I did super intentionally, but I, it was a retrograde and I'm always looking for, you know, things with RE in front of them. So I'm going to (laughs) reread these Mm -hmm. books. And, um, that was the year, the following year that I actually wrote my book. So Mm. it set up that, that, uh, that energy. Um, but I, what I do is, I get clear about what I want. What are my goals? But how I do that is I align it to the personal year I'm going into. So for you, you're going to want to make sure your 2024 goals are aligned to three energy. So yours are going to be about expansion, about communication. Three energy is where you can really see your star rise. It's good for self-promotion. So those are the types of, of goals that you want to think about. How does that how does that work with the energy that's naturally present for me? Um, 
So I generally start a little list in my phone, in my notes, just things I want to do in October as I think of them or as they come up. So if you're in a one year, you're going to want to think about what you're starting, what new beginnings, who do I want to make contact with? What do I want to really have confidence to move forward on? And those are the types of things you're going to want to do in your one year. If you're in a two year, it's going to be about nurturing and your relationships and the people you meet. And it's going to be centered around having patience. If it's an 11 two year, which is one of those master numbers, perhaps you want to have a baby. Perhaps you're thinking about getting pregnant, expanding your family. The two energy can also represent divorce and a departure. So there's always a high low to every number. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. Um, That three energy we talked about, communication, expansion, um, you're like I said, you'll have a lot of opportunity in your three year people who you're meeting that can really forward your goals and dreams. Okay, Uh, four year, you want to think about what do you want to organize? What can you be diligent on? What kind of foundation are you building? Four years will teach you about procrastination. So you want to make sure in October you're not procrastinating Mm -hmm. because otherwise that will set up a theme that you're really going to have a bit of a struggle. So finish what you start in October, right? Um, Four Energy also wants you to go with the flow, right? It wants you to have some structure. So those are all things that come in with the four year. Look after your health, you know, not in October. Don't go to the doctor in October Mm -hmm. if you can avoid it. (laughs) Right. But it's that real foundational ego could be an issue. So think about, you know, how you're going to navigate that. Okay. Um, Your five years, the one that can really bring change and shift. Sometimes five years can be a bit accident prone. So you just want to give yourself a little bit extra time. Maybe when you're going places, don't take the big risks. Okay. But this is where Five Energy really loves travel, adventure, freedom. So you want to think of goals that will fit in with that. Avoid gossip. Avoid drama, what I call fake drama, right? So a lot of times Five Energy is attracted to other people's drama. You want to sort of, you know, temper that. Um, Six Energy rules beauty. It rules your home, love, marriage, divorce, birth, death your pets, your children. It's a huge category, but anything's heart centered will come into six energy. I got married in a six year. So a lot of people have babies in six years. So you want to pay attention to that. Seven energies where you really want to become the expert on something. You really want to think about, you know, specializing. That's where seven energy really realizes its rewards. Um, It's also about self-care, okay? And it can be a little bit reclusive. So seven year would not be the time to plan a huge social events or parties. You're not going to really want to go to them, okay? It also rules the legal system. So if you have anything that's been dragging through the court system, like an insurance settlement or a divorce, this is where you can find conclusion or finalize that or where it can completely escalate. So you want to set your intentions around that and use October as your, you know, as your compass and and how you're going to navigate. Eight energy is all about balance. And we're going to be in an eight universal year for 2024. So you want to find balance. If you think of the flow lines of an eight, you can put a dollar sign right over it. (laughs) Okay. It rules finance. It also, um, eight energy can repeat patterns and they can chase their tail. So you want to make sure that you're not repeating, you know, cycles, repeating patterns. Make sure that you're doing something different, mixing it up a bit. It also deals with authority figures. In eight year, I see a lot of people get promoted. Eight year can also be like you win the lottery, could also go bankrupt. It's those Mm -hmm. highs and lows. So you want to pay attention to that. But balance is really the key there. And then nine energy is where you want to not start anything. (laughs) Mm. Things that start under nine energy almost always require some kind of relaunch or, um, you know, they just don't grow roots. They don't get off the ground. I see a lot of people actually who have miscarriages in a nine 
nine energy, but it's about letting go. If you don't let go, I always say the universe does not negotiate. So it's up to you if you want to release it with dignity and grace when you're urged to, or if you want to have it, you know, ripped away from you later on. (laughs) So one of them, one is much easier. But under that nine energy, it's about research. It's about continuing to grow what you've been working on. It's just that those new connections, those new things you're trying to get off the ground, you want to just hold back a bit, do some research and wait for time to to be on your side. Right. On that, because nine is a little unique, I because I, we're talking about how October is the time to set intentions and to do everything you want for next year. So how, let's talk about how would you suggest someone with it going into a nine year, how do they use October if they can't start anything new? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so great time for research. So I'm actually 2023 for me personally has been a nine year. Ah. And so I've had people approach me with, you know, um, you should launch a podcast. And I'm like, we can talk about that next year. And in the meantime, <laughs> I'm going to educate myself on what it would be like to have my own podcast. I see. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure if that's something I want or not. So, you know, I'm just researching. I'm chilling. Mm. What I did last October is I went through a couple closets and mm. started to get rid because I knew that that energy was there for me, that I would be able to really create space and release and let go. And what's amazing is when you're under that nine energy, how it's so much easier to let go of things. So you can look at it, you know, a month earlier, two months earlier and go, I, oh, I need this. I need to keep this. You get to your nine and give yourself a full moon and you'll be able to, you know, let go of all sorts of things. And under nine, it's always about that humanitarian effort, right? So, you know, figure out what you can donate figure out what you, who you can help, that type of thing. Those are always rewarded. And under nine energy, other things I did, um, I've really worked on a lot of forgiveness and resentment and release and things of that nature. Um, it's so important to create space. The problem right. people have with nine energy is you have to give it up and you don't see what's coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have to trust, right? It's just yeah, knowing something better will come, but not knowing what that is. <laughs> yeah. And so something else I've been doing this year is um, planning, looking at, you know, my website, how I want it to change. Do I like my provider? Do I want something different? I've been researching all of those things. So next year I'll be able to make a move <laughs> on my, uh... you know, on upgrading my website. Yeah, because next year is a one for you to start new things. Yeah, and so it doesn't mean don't don't take advantage of opportunities that present. I mean, obviously, you invited me on your podcast, and absolutely, I'm going to be on your podcast, right? But looking back, that first podcast we did together was actually under my eight year. So, uh-huh. <laughs> so you can see how things set up. Right, right. And to move forward. So it's nice. But without fail, every time I do a major clutter clear, whether it's, you know, cleaning out my office or going through a closet, but really when I, I feel like where it's happened the most is when I digitally clear things, almost within hours or days, I'll get invited on some, um, you know, on a podcast or I'll wow. have someone contact me with an That's opportunity. That's amazing. Yeah. That's something that I I don't think about. Pe- most people don't think about like how much digital clutter they've accumulated and how even letting that go can bring opportunities. Huge. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely massive. Wow. Okay. I'm curious, just because I have a birthday in October, does that mean anything different? Because I'm always celebrating a birthday, right? Yeah. Well, for you, I so I mean, you're, you're a public figure. I know I follow you on Instagram. I see you in October celebrating. I see you celebrating things all year, right? That's oh. not how that's not how everybody rolls. Like uh-huh. you but you have this, you know, kind of social thing going on. You have lots of um, you know, you generally have some type of party for your birthday um, or multiple parties and you are at parties all year. So <laughs> <laughs> so you're just inviting more of that energy. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
Yeah. So like, for example, Canadian Thanksgiving is in October and most mm-hmm. of us see our families, right? Mm-hmm. And then you see your family all year, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it, it really is. Okay. Okay. Tell us more about the energy of 2024. First, let's talk about 2023 and then, and then now where we're going. Okay. So 2023 was a seven collective year, just adding two plus zero plus two plus three equals seven. And so with that, um, some of the predictions I made last year were about mother nature, right? And seven energy rules water. And so we had things happen in this year, like the the submarine implosion. Right. Um, right. And then you had the, there was a boat with a bunch of migrants were over two, you know, two, 300 people drowned. Um, you know, and there was at the, the very beginning of the year, we had that massive earthquake. So there has been no shortage of, of mother nature, right? Um, it also rules mystery. So in the previous seven years, when those Malaysian planes disappeared into the ocean. Yeah, those were seven right? years. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it seven year rules things like that. It also rules metaphysics and spirituality. And if you look back to January at how many, you know, TikTok accounts there were or spiritual, um, you know, teachers, people who were out there, you know, putting their putting their good word out that has been just absolutely it, it's right. gone so big right. right um so i i do welcome people to be discerning about that um not everyone with a with a tiktok channel knows what they're talking about mm-hmm. <laughs> but um you know and it, it's that time to become the expert so in a seven year you'll see a lot of people in a personal seven year have a dark night of soul and they have mm. their spiritual awakening. So that's mm. all part of the seven year. But if you think of how, like I, I go back 15 years ago, I was so deep into the spiritual closet. I mean, I was working corporate. If I had put a bunch of crystals on my desk, it would have been absolutely, you know, career limiting, I would say. <laughs> Wow. Right. Whereas yeah. now, you know, who doesn't have a salt lamp on their desk or a, mm-hmm. or a bunch of crystals, right? Right. So that has definitely become more accepted, I would say, this year. Okay. And like I said, Seven Energy likes to be the expert. So you see a lot of people who are really researching and getting clear. Um, it's um, it's very sort of almost more reclusive. Right. And I don't think we've seen the type of events we were seeing, you know, in previous years or pre pandemic that on that big, big scale right now. It's ramping up, but they haven't really, you know, it hasn't really happened. So going into our eight year, 2024, it's the one you can put a dollar sign right over. So if I go back to our last eight year and look at what what energy that brought. October actually had that Black Monday stock market crash. Okay. So wait, what year was the last eight year? Uh, the last eight year was mm-hmm. 2015. Okay. 2015. Okay. <laughs> yes. So that's we had that huge um, Black Monday stock stock market crash. I'm looking to October this year to see what the markets are doing. Um, you know, mm, are they volatile? Are they time. up or down? What's going wow. on with crypto? Mm. That's the kind of stuff you can expect to see real movement on um, in an eight year. So under that energy, you can look for changes to our financial system next year in 2024. Um, eight energy is also where karma finds balance. So when you say the word karma, people get a little cagey, like, eh, karma. But (laughs) if you have, you know, done good things, good things will come back to you, right? You have nothing to worry about. Uh, If you are shady or have been, you know, lie, cheat, steal, yeah, you should probably be a little worried if you're going into an A personal year. (laughs) Um, But this is for, for the collective. And I think, um, Eight energy rules power, rules authority. And you've seen people questioning authority under the seven energy. 
Seven energy rules curiosity. It rules conspiracy theory. So now going into our eight year, we're going to see how how those structures change or fall. Mm, that sounds like a big year then. Financial system structures. That's everything that's been kind of building up in society like with issues. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know in, in 2016 was the, the year of, um, or sorry, 2015 was the year of the last big U.S. election. And it was Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And we're going to the nine year. I said, I don't know who's going to win, but I know that it will never be the same after this. <laughs> right? And it, because either we were going to have the first female president or we were going to have Donald Trump as president. And both of those things were, were such a departure from, from what we normally um, right. see in that system. And so that's something that, you know, yeah. we kind of foretold in the numbers. I feel like towards the end of the numbers, like when you're going eight, nine, and then one, it's like, there's a lot of change and there's a lot of, cause you're starting a new cycle or you're ending a cycle, starting a new cycle. Is that right? So do you think these next three years will be like big? Huge, massive. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, um, a lot of people don't like their nine year. I see a lot of clients in their personal nine year because things are being taken away. And whenever anything's removed, it involves change. Not every number is as accepting of change as, as some others. If you have a lot of five energy, you just roll with it. You're fine. Right. right. But someone with a lot of four energy, they are very habitual. They have their rules and their systems. And so when things come in and shake that up. That's not always, it's not always their happy place. <laughs> totally. Okay. So what would be your advice to listeners now to kind of recap, or if you have anything additional to share to prepare for October and to prepare for a really good year? Yeah. So biggest thing is make space, clear your clutter, digital, emotional, physical. Okay. And there's, there's different tools for forgiveness. There's, you know, and I, I, a lot of times in readings, I discuss that with clients, but you've got to let go of these old hurts. You really need to heal. And so when you can create that space, that is where pure magic can roll in. So make space. Um, the next thing I would say is get clear. What do you want? Don't set yourself up and put 30 things on your list, but get clear and pick 10. And a way I like to set goals is actually through using the numbers. So your one goal can just be something completely selfish. One is for you. What do you want? Totally selfish goal. Mm -hmm. Your two goals should be a relationship goal, whether it's with your parents, your spouse, your children, your you know siblings, but something to do with relationships is a good two goal. Your three goal is all about expansion. It also rules creativity and communication. So maybe you want to put a creative goal there. Your four goal is um, all about that foundation. What do you really want to get clear on? What do you want to finish that maybe you've been procrastinating on? So some type of completion goal is good under four energy, or it's where I like to put health goals. Okay. Five energy, I like to put a travel or an adventure goal or something, you know, if you want a new car or a new house, you can put that there. Six, like I said it rules your children, your pets. So if you wanted to have a baby, you would put that there. If you wanted to get married, maybe that would be a goal that you would have. But your six goal rules, like I said, marriage, birth, divorce, death. So you want to make a six goal, something that involves love. Your seven goal is that self-care, right? Maybe it's you're going to get a massage every month. Maybe you're going to get a manicure every month, whatever it is. But your seven goals should be a self-care goal or a spiritual goal. You can also put something there if you have legal stuff going on that you want to resolve. Eight energy, this is your money goal. This is where you can put anything that involves finance, okay? Um, and then your nine goal I always say it should be a goal for human for humanitarian goal, something for the collective. So your one goal totally selfish. Your nine goal needs to be have that humanitarian component to it. 
So if okay. you if you move through that way, you hit every area of your life, mm. right? And so you're working on something from all aspects, which is really um, well-rounded. So, so you're saying we should have something for those nine numbers and and set those type like like well-rounded goals for the next year. Yeah, that's that's a place to start. And then you can, you know, your one goal, you can drill down and put three or four points underneath right. it. You know, but just get really clear. That can help people. Um, but once you step into that drumbeat and you're using the energy, that is that is where you can make real progress, have super soul evolution, and you know, just step into the flow. Amazing. Okay. Oh, any any other tips or last words? So what are we doing? We're making space. We're making a list. Um, yeah, getting clear. I, I definitely would pay attention to the new moon and I would definitely pay attention to the full moon because that is what kind of gives you mother nature's drumbeat. And if you can set intentions at the new moon, figure out what you need to release at the full moon, just every month you do those two things. And, you know, as you go, you'll make it your own. It will get more and more intense. Now maybe there's moon water. Maybe you're charging crystals. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <the whole> thing. <laughs> but it's, you know, following that is important. And I'm, I, when this is released, I'll have my 2024 moon calendars on my, on my website for people to download for free. So they can go there and get that so they can follow. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Joy, tell us about where we can find you online and what you offer. Okay. Um, joyofnumerology.com. Um, in October, I highly recommend that people figure out what personal year they have. So either, you know, they can do it on their own, but if they wanted a reading, a little guidance, um, they can book a year review session, a year in advance planning session, or a numerology blueprint are, are great places to start. Um, but when you know that number, you can put your your efforts and action into where it where it works. Um, you'll follow me on Instagram, Facebook at Joy of Numerology, and that's it. Amazing. Thank you so much, Joy. I'm so excited to use October to just create the best year for me. This is so like, it, it's so helpful for me to use. It's like just another added tool to everything that I've been doing, right? Yeah. I'm so excited for your three year, all that Thank expansion you. and communication. Yeah. Your star is going to get even shinier. It's going to be awesome for you. I, yeah. We'll see what's in store. And you know what, as you were talking earlier, it reminded me of like last October and how this year was about relationships. So like last October, I went to a conference where I met all these new friends, like business friends. And that foreshadowed how I would, I continued like keeping up, like meeting the, with them like every month this year. So I was like, oh yeah, that did happen in October. So it's funny how I wasn't even like, I didn't realize that until right now. And you're probably looking at houses or on the MLS, right. you know, doing yeah. all of that. And then you bought mm -hmm. a house. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, that was foreshadowing also. So if people go back yeah. on their bank statements, go back and look at old emails, texts, see what you were doing in October last year. You'll see how it impacted your year this year. Mm hmm. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Check out Joy of Numerology and wishing you a very great October and 2024. Yes, wishing everyone a magical October. 